Well, this past Sunday night, NASA launched a new mission to explore the sun. And this mission has a very important local angle. Paul Gross is now back with that story. And Paul, you've gone nearly, what, all the way up for this one? Well, I sure have. Let me tell you about this. Uh, I've known Dr. Thomas Zerbuck in since his days at the University of Michigan. He's NASA's Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate. That's the agency's top science administrator. And as he told me in a special interview via satellite, this mission is personal for him because he started working on it years ago right here at U of M. Oh, it's an exciting time. You know, I tell you, I was over 12 years ago, I started with this mission. I was there at the first meetings when we started to imagine it. I actually invented one of the instruments that are, is on this spacecraft. The spacecraft, called Solar Orbiter, will study the sun's poles. Very important research that we haven't been able to do before. The poles of the sun is the region and our star where we learn about the magnetic engine of the sun, the so-called dynamo. It's that engine that creates all the activity. It's that engine that creates storms. Charged particles from those storms are harmful to our astronauts in space and also are vitally important to us here on Earth. As a technological society, space weather affects us each and every day. Your TV satellite, your power system on the ground. So here's the issue about space weather. The thing that we know the least about is the near solar environment. And that's exactly what this mission is observing. It's always so great catching up with Dr. Z, as they call him. He is as enthusiastic about space as I am about the weather. Now, here's some important perspective. Once Solar Orbiter arrives at the sun, it's going to join another spacecraft called the Parker Solar Probe. Now, if you can imagine a football field with the Earth at one end zone and the sun at the other end zone, Solar Orbiter is going to be at the sun's 30-yard line, and the Parker Solar Probe is at the sun's four-yard line. So talk about an extreme close-up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love how you explain everything too. He you breaks kind of, it all you down. You break it all down so we can so all understand it. The non-scientists can get it. Right. So one thing that Dr. Z mentioned about the solar storm is its impacts on power grids, mm -hmm. which we can all relate to. No right. one wants to have their power affected. Right. Is this something that DTE, say for instance, would be, you know, trying to prepare for? Well, I went actually over to DTE two years ago and asked that very question. So what we're going to do is we're going to post that story on the same page as this story and click on Detroit.com. We'll probably get that posted in the next 45 minutes or so, and it's really worth checking out. It's very interesting. All right. Fascinating, sure Paul. Thank you. Yeah.